So over the many years, maybe 10 years, I've, I'm always very impressed when I do videos with you, with the Genetech. It seems that you have, um, you, you, you have really good control of the technology and understanding and the way you do things, right? Uh, I'm trying to. Uh, I hope, <laughs> I think that I already did some things, but I, I will do more. You, you will do more. Um, what is the thinking of your, your company? Okay. So um, why I uh, graduate from my college, I, I want to start my own company, but uh, uh, at that time, uh, China in the old stage, so uh, I decided to stay in the college uh, for the, as a developer for five years. Uh, after that, uh, I set up my own company. Uh, I want to always want to find an, uh, a right product to combine the market's demand as well as the newest uh, uh, technology coming to China. It's always a challenge to be at the right time, at, you know, like uh, to be successful. You have to do something amazing and really stable, but also be at the right time, at the right moment with the right solution, and then it can scale, it can become very big, right? Are you, are you managed to catch those waves? Yeah, um, from two directions. One is the, the potential demand from the market, as well as uh, the potential technology that we, we, can really, uh, we can really develop and that can be used for the, for the product. So that means uh, the product is the uh, cross points that the, the demands, potential demands, as well as uh, our development capability the new technology trend, but uh, we, we need to get, it, get them done uh, by our own hands. And then the, the cross point is the future product, next step, next thing product, uh, <clears throat> but uh, not me too. Something we must think uh, uh, further uh, in advance, and the prepare in advance for some time. So as you, you are the general manager, I can imagine that one of the nice things about being the general manager is that you can try to have some ideas and try to, to, to decide the strategy where it can go potentially. And uh, it's like a really nice role to have to be able to be like, you kind of, are you kind of like the idea guy or you have a bunch of people at the company that are also always coming with new ideas and you pick the best? Okay. To answer your question, actually, uh, I'm not willing to be a CEO, but I'm willing to be a good product manager. So in this company, my uh, major role is to create new ideas and make it happen uh, based, on the, uh, based on our new products and uh, gathering uh, our uh, development team, uh, their uh, capability, the resource, and make the product uh, happen on tr uh, and on track. And uh, how would you say is uh, what is the role in this uh, this business for the customer and for you? How is the uh, like because sometimes the customer have crazy cool ideas and demands. Uh, the big demands. Maybe they have too much demand, not enough idea, or too many idea, not enough uh, delivery, and uh, is a big challenge to manage all this or. Our value, uh, our value is um, uh, sorting the ideas and to see uh, which idea we can do, we really can take, uh, which demand is uh, the demand that we can um, make a product to deliver to meet the demand. So that is our value. How many times have you uh, reached uh, some kind of wave where you're feeling you know, like, ah, oh, this is perfect timing. We do, we're doing just, it just works. And this is a perfect partnership with a great customer, great partner. And we are like, do you, do you have a feeling this is happening every week here? Or it's some, it's, no, no, it's like, it's, it's happened. It's too, how many times it happens in your career? <laughs> okay. Um, definitely several times. I'm so excited. Uh, I was so excited that we have uh, this kind of idea. I find the technology. Uh, we have. A f I found a solution. I found the basic draft product idea, and uh, as well as uh, our uh, techie guys, our development team leader. They they tell me that they find uh, a new way to do a solution, 
uh, and then uh, can uh, solve the issue, the problem. So a few times, not, uh, not every week I cannot do that, uh, like that. Yeah. So years, for years, every several years, great idea. And I guess, as I understand, you know, I'm just a YouTuber, but as I understand success, you have to manage to do something that can scale and something that's really great and suddenly you can just push a button, I don't know how it works in China, but you push a button and then you activate factory capacity, you know, like you, you just, you, you're able to do something that suddenly can be in big quantities, <laughs> right? But you, you have to engineer, like you have to plan everything to be able to scale, right? Or mm -hmm. Um, okay, so f two things. One is uh, you, you are talking about the manufacturing capacity. That is another thing. We have our own factories and um, we, 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 we have a bigger factories as well as we have a, a, a small factories that is more flexible for small quantities. That is another story. But for products, uh, uh, scaling up, that we, we call that a product line. So uh, create uh, not only one product, but uh, a product line to, to scale, scaling up to meet the different uh, requirements for the same category, but a different uh, detailed requirement. So we, we have product line, uh, entry level, middle level, high level products. Um, uh, so you have those teams, for example, you have the team in Germany, mm -hmm. right? Uh, how is it going? They, they, they are purely doing sales. Uh, actually, the, all the development, uh, uh, all the development done by uh, uh, done by a uh, headquarter in Shenzhen and uh, another R and D center in Hefei, Anhui province. But is it true that also a success in technology, it's it's a lot to do with marketing and sales sometimes, right? It's like you have to find the market and then fit it somehow. Uh, yeah, we've, we've, uh, we need to find the potential market. If we find the market, the market is there, that means that we are late. We must think in advance, think something not happen. There is a not, not, not ready successful products already there. Or they are there, but we find something um, we can do much better. How much of uh, amazing, uh, like it's my first time here and since 2019 and it's such, uh, I, I feel like I'm in 2040 sometimes when I've seen those things the last few days. Um, and when I look at those buildings over there, with the, um, when you see those buildings right here, this is uh, the DGI, DGI building, but not just the building and architecture, but uh, the lifestyle. Um, sometimes I wonder, how much is China and how much is coming from outside? Like, are there a lot of amazing technologies that are here that you just need to try to ad adjust and adapt for other markets? Uh, <clears throat> okay, so it's like this. Um, um, in, in Shenzhen here, faster growing technology uh, here uh, from um, the basic Me Too things means to the follow, following technology. Uh, to the <coughs> to the uh, only do the low cost manufacturing uh, eventually uh, many companies um, um, like uh, like us we we more focus on development uh, and, uh, <coughs> and we we are trying to uh, create some new uh, new things and um, innovation things and not do the me too not do the just uh, lower cost we will do new features new technology inside so eventually, uh, Shenzhen uh, becomes such kind of a city. Uh, more and more uh, um, company like DJI, they are, they are just over there. <coughs> they are the leading uh, technology company in Shenzhen. Uh, more and more such kind of a company uh, uh, come to Shenzhen or uh, grow up in Shenzhen. When I, see, when I think of DJI, it's amazing, kind of like as a toy or as a, a cinematography tool but I also feel that the potential of companies like that is like they could deliver, uh, you know, like a, a heart heart machine to people who have a heart attack or uh, medicine to people who live far away and all this kind of stuff. Like in general, do you feel like technology is a way to 
really solve important problems in society and make the world better. It's not just business. It's not, it's not just about business, uh, right? Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, Shenzhen as a manufacturing harbor, uh, as well as is uh, uh, tending to uh, uh, innovative technology uh, city. Yes, we, we create, uh, together with uh, many other companies, we create a lot of innovative product to solve the problem, make the life easier, better, make things uh, quicker. So I, I guess that's maybe also a little bit why you enjoy your, your, your job, right? Because you, you get a feeling that potentially you are trying to solve some problem for potentially billions of people. But let's say millions of people is already amazing, but or even if it's 12 people, it doesn't matter. But if you're helping people... Yes. Making money, yes, uh, I can. I, I have some uh, happiness for making money, definitely, as a business. But um, more happy uh, if I can uh, bring some uh, valued products and uh, solve the problem for the whole society or for certain kind of people. Then the value of being a company in the world, then we have a special value. We create something for the world. And so I've been coming to Shenzhen now 12, 13 years, and uh, I love this city. It's like, I don't know if it's the best city in the world or something like that, because <laughs> it feels like it's the, the, it's the real city of opportunity. It's the real city of, you know, like uh, wh when you have the expert designers who are, who are expert in the platform, you know, the potential is, the, the sky is the limit. Like, you can really potentially do so many interesting things. But I guess your problem is that you are, when is, do you have too many things to do? And then you don't have any amount of time because it's only 24 hours, right, mm -hmm. in one day. And uh, no enough resource for the developers. So that is why um, uh, five, uh, six years ago, we set up another R&D center in uh, Hefei, uh, Anhui province. Because there have more uh, young developers come. Shenzhen is the lack of such kind of resource right now. So, so it, it must be also amazing when you, when you, when you know the, the scale you can go and how many uh, engineers you're able to hire and bring in to your company and then each time you can bring one more, then there's more potential, but then they have to, they have to feel like they, they are they're working like not on useless things. They should be feeling that they're always doing something exciting, right? <laughs> Everybody. And it's, it's a hard thing to manage or... Well, yeah, but sometimes uh, daily work is boring. Sometimes uh, when we have new ideas, uh, all, the, all the people uh, developing a team are exciting, depends on. But uh, I, I should tell you, a lot of work is boring. Uh, sometimes a big headache if they, they have some challenges and uh, work, working for that uh, challenge for weeks or months and then they still they cannot find a solution and the pressure from my side from our customer side pushed to them and they they're frustrated <laughs> i hear from the the linux guys uh, at the linaro that one of the things that i heard them say all the time is they would say when it's boring then it's a success so you have to the the thing has to just work and there shouldn't be like crazy challenges where you have to work all night to make things but uh, at some point, if it's get boring, then okay, it's working. Um, yeah, Jobs said, uh, stay hungry, stay foolish. But uh, for a developer, they should uh, stay boring. <laughs> all right. So uh, this is uh, such an amazing uh, office here. So all your potential customers and your existing customers, uh, if they haven't yet, they should definitely come to Shenzhen. Everything is open. Everything is ready, right? Um, yeah, they are welcome. They are welcome. Right now, the, you know, the border is open, and no blocking, anything, and we have a, we have a room for the for the guest, for the customer to do the um, development job together if they have some project. So pretty much everything is back to normal. Uh, yeah. Even better than normal. <laughs> cannot say still uh, uh, picking up all right cool all right so thanks a lot one more thing is uh, Shenzhen is the youngest uh, uh, city in China 
It's only, uh, yeah, it's only uh, almost uh, 50 years old only, 40 to 50. And the start from uh, 5,000 population small village. Right now we have uh, 60 million, something like that. So, miracle, unbelievable. It's, um, it's we'll come to Shenzhen. <laughs> it's it's it's. I, I don't want to get into politics, but there's there must be some, uh, like I don't know. Maybe it's just capitalism, or I don't know what it is. But there's just so much happening here, and it's like the, when I look out, I see like four scra seven skyscrapers being built mm -hmm. right here. Yeah. Um, so. That maybe there's no limit, or maybe there's a limit. Hopefully, there's no limit. It, it just keeps, <laughs> like, because as far as I understand, there's a there's a Shenzhen here, and there's Dongguan over there, there's uh, Huizhou, and uh, and all these kind kind of cities. They're growing, and they're growing into one big city. Because of people, because of people, young people, and a lot of innov uh, innovative people uh, came to Shenzhen, and they uh, stayed together. And uh, because of the supply chain here for electronics, uh, is uh, fully set up. And then it's very easy uh, for you to, to find all the uh, wonders here, as well as um, the garment of Shenzhen. It's very open, it's very efficient. So uh, it's easy to set up your own business in Shenzhen. And I'm hoping, I don't know how it is, but I'm hoping it's not too expensive to live. Uh, it depends, depends where you are, but I guess you, you might have to commute if you want a cheaper rent a little bit. That's a little bit of an issue. Um, for <coughs> for the office, not a big issue, but uh, the properties of, for the uh, young uh, <coughs> young guys is a, is a big headache right now. So it's a very expensive, I should say. And this is uh, actually an issue in every city that I that I can think of. Like uh, when I'm in Europe, every city that I go to, they all have problem with this. I don't know. Somebody should figure out how to do like a lot of affordable housing everywhere. It's, it's, it's a problem right now in Shenzhen. It's a big problem for, for a company like us. We, we hired a lot of uh, young people and they, they, they are here, but um, the house is too expensive. Yeah, so somebody needs to find architectural solutions for that. <laughs> because uh, I've seen, uh, I've been here for a week and it's such amazing architecture I haven't seen before. And it's really uh, exciting to see such uh, architecture. But it would be nice to see it to create affordable housing too. And I guess yeah. that's another challenge. It's not just beautiful yeah. office space and beautiful, like uh, by the bay, the O Bay, it looks amazing with the, I think it's a Uruguayan architect or something like that. Um, just amazing new things to look at. And the, the malls, I've never seen such mall. I think <laughs> it's, it's beating Dubai or something. It's amazing. <laughs> like in Bao'an, the, the malls, whoa. Uh, there's so much lights everywhere, but uh, of, of course, there's another challenge to get affordable housing so, so people don't have to go so much in the Didi, in the taxis, in the, in the subway, <laughs> and to not go so far every day to go back and forth to work. Let's hope. Cross fingers. <laughs> cool. All right. Okay. So thanks a lot. Thank you. And uh, nice to be back here after three, four years Welcome. of uh, yeah. weird time that was happening before. Yeah, last time I met you in Shenzhen is... Um, how many years? Seven 2019. years? 2018. 19, 19? Yeah. 18. I think it's yeah. 18. Cool. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Thanks for watching. <laughs>